Hey guys, today we're going to talk about Lindsay Buschak. Hey guys, Victoria Paxton here. Thanks for stopping back by my YouTube channel. Okay, you guys, we're going to talk about Lindsay Buschak. And I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. <laughs> okay, guys, so like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's free. If you're a real psychic, good on you. You're always welcome here. If you're a fake psychic, I don't want you on my channel. Get the heck off. And you know who you are, the one who stole all my videos. Yeah. Okay, guys, time out, time out, time out. First off, I am not feeling good. I got sick Friday. I was freezing all day. Yesterday, headache. My whole body was aching. I was frozen all day. I slept all day. Today, I'm not freezing as bad, um, but my body is aching from head to toe. But I need to get these videos done, so I'm gonna get them done. Lindsay Elizabeth Buschak was born on November 2nd, 1983 to Jeff Buschak and Evelyn Reitmeier. She had one sister named Sarah. In 2008, 24-year-old Lindsay was an ambitious Victoria real estate agent who had made a promising start to her career and was described by her family, friends, and colleagues as popular and caring. In late January 2008, Buschak received a phone call from a woman who said that she and her husband we're urgently, trying, we're urgently trying to find a home with a budget of $1 million. The caller had a foreign accent and offered what was later determined to be a fake name. Unnerved by the nature of the call, Buschak asked the caller how she obtained her personal phone number as she was a relatively new and junior employee. The caller claimed that one of Buschak's previous clients had shared it with her. Buschak told Zalo and her father about the call and revealed her concerns. Zalo encouraged Buschak to meet with the clients because of the high commission that she would earn from the sale of the home. To reassure her, Zalo, 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 <laughs> offered to wait outside, excuse me, <coughs> offered to wait outside the property in his car just in case anything should go down. Buschak found a suitable property and arranged an appointment with the client to view the home at 5.30 p.m. on Saturday, February 2nd, 2008. Buschak and Zylo ate a late lunch at a restaurant, paying the bill at 4.24 p.m. They departed separately in their own vehicles. It's believed that Lindsay returned home to change her clothes before the viewing. Zylo traveled to an automobile repair shop to pick up a colleague, although he was running late. CCTV footage from the auto shop showed him leaving with a colleague at 5.30 p.m. Zylo and Buschak had exchanged several text messages and Buschak was aware that Zylo would be running late. The street upon which the house is located, to Sousa Place, is a small cul-de-sac containing four homes. Number 1702 is at the outer cul-de-sac on the intersection of to Sousa Place and a main thoroughfare torque. Torque Drive. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. The side of the property and the fence of the back garden run parallel to Torque Drive. Although the caller had told Buschak that she would come along to the viewing, a man and a woman were there. At 5.30 p.m., two witnesses saw a six-foot-tall white man with dark hair and a blonde-haired woman between 35 and 45 years old wearing a distinctly patterned dress walking up to the cul-de-sac. The witnesses saw Buschak greet and shake hands with the couple in a manner that caused witnesses to feel that Buschak did not know the couple. Buschak and the couple then entered the house. Zylo and his colleague arrived at the cul-de-sac at about 5.40 p.m. As they were driving to the property, Zylo saw a figure through the glass of the front door. He parked outside the property for about 10 minutes and then drove to another street to wait as he did not want to seem like a nosy interfering boyfriend. After waiting another 10 minutes, Zylo texted Buschak to confirm that the situation was normal, but Buschak never opened that text message. After 20 minutes had passed since Zylo had arrived and seen the couple go back into the house, Zylo went to the front door and found it locked when he tried to open it. Through the mottled glass of the front door, he saw Buschak's shoes in the entrance hallway. But there was no sign of movement and no, no one answered his Excuse me, no one answered his repeated knocks at the door, so he dialed 911. 
While Zyla was on the phone with the operator, his colleague found a gap in the fence in the back garden, entered the garden, and saw that the back patio door was wide open. He summoned Zylo, who told the operator that the two men were entering the house. Zylo then entered the, ended the phone call. Zylo's colleague passed through the main level of the house to unlock the front door in order to admit Zylo, who immediately ran upstairs and found Yushek uh, lying in a pool of blood in the master bedroom. Zylo called 911 a second time and emergency services arrived soon after. Bushak was pronounced dead when the paramedics arrived. She had been stabbed multiple times. There were no defensive wounds indicating that it was likely that she had first been stabbed from behind and had no indication of what was about to happen. None of Bushak's possessions had been stolen and she had not been sexually assaulted. Zylo and his colleague were taken into custody but were released without charge after their version of events were verified and the timestamp surveillance footage from the auto shop proved that they could not have committed the murder. According to the Saanich Police Department, Zylo had been interviewed several times over the years and has always cooperated with the police. He also passed a polygraph test. Because the crime scene yielded no DNA, fingerprints, or any other physical evidence, it is believed that the murder <clears throat> was well organized and executed by people who had killed before. The police believe that the killers were leaving through the front door when Zylo first arrived at the property and then fled through the back door, leaving the back patio door open and passing through the fence to their vehicle on Torque Drive. This scenario was consistent with the witnesses' statements that the unknown couple were walking, not driving up to the cul-de-sac, and the fact that the owners of all the vehicles in the cul-de-sac were confirmed. The cell phone used by the unknown woman to call Bushak was purchased in Vancouver several months before the murder and had never been used until the call was placed. It was activated under the name of Paulo Rodriguez, which authorities considered to be a fake name. It was registered to a legit business address in Vancouver, but it's believed that the business has no connection with the case and that its address was simply chosen at random. The phone was deactivated soon after the murder and has not been used since. Cell phone tower pings showed that the phone traveled on the ferry from Vancouver the day before the murder. Authorities believe that the phone was used for the sole purpose of the murder and was discovered afterward, which supports their theory that the murder had been carefully planned. Zylo's family were investigated because of their connections with the cul-de-sac. D'Souza Court is named after the developer, Joe D'Souza, a friend and business associate of Shirley Zylo, Jason's mother. Part of the cul-de-sac was still under construction at the time of the murder, and De Sousa, sorry, De Sousa was at the location an hour before the murder supervising the construction work. However, the police have stated that no one in the Zylo family is a suspect. In September 2010, the American Network, NBC, aired a Dateline episode titled Dream House Killer. Sanish detectives revealed that in December of 2007, about eight weeks prior to the murder, Yushak tried to contact the friend of her ex boyfriend while on a visit to Calgary. On January 22, 2008, the largest drug bust in Alberta's history took place and the friend was arrested, accused of being a major participant in the drug trafficking operation. It was speculated that Bushek's murder may have been ordered by a drug cartel because she was believed to be a police informant. The detectives investigated that possibility but quickly eliminated it as a motive because Bushak was not an informant and the personal nature of her murder did not fit a hired killer's method of operation. Crime scene investigator Yolanda McClary and veteran homicide detective Dwayne Stanton agree that Bushak's murder was not a contracted operation related to a drug cartel as it was brutal but it was too amateurish. The investigators believe that Bushak's murder was very personal and planned by someone close to her perhaps by someone who had access to inside information from the real estate office where she worked. Speculation regarding another drug bust was also investigated as a link to Bushak's murder. One man's phone had been tapped because of his high level of involvement in the trafficking and sale of narcotics in British Columbia and Alberta. During the wiretaps, law enforcement uncovered information that led to the BC legislature's raid in 2003. Bushak and her boyfriend's phones had also been tapped because of his association with the group. However, the theory was quickly dismissed because Bushek had no known involvement with drug use or trafficking and was not included in the defense witness list during the trial. Later in 2008, Nikki, a close friend of Bushek, claimed that she had been awakened by a telephone call in the middle of the night from an unknown number. 
She did not remember much of what the female caller had said, but she noticed that the caller had a strange accent that she couldn't place. She became scared when she remembered that Lindsay had reported that her unidentified client and possible murderer spoke with an odd accent and that she believed it may have been fake. After the phone call, Nikki called the originating phone number 20 to 30 times until the call was answered by Shirley Zylo. Nikki asked Zylo why she had called her and how she had her number as they didn't know each other. Zylo replied that she intended to call her secretary, who was also named Nikki, and that she did not know why the other Nikki's number was in her contact list. She presumed that her son Jason must have added it. Zylo denies that the event occurred, and it has not been public publicly revealed whether Nikki's claim was investigated by authorities. In February of each year, Yushak's father, Jeff, leads an annual walk in remembrance of her and to keep her case in the public eye. In August 2017, a comment was posted on a message board at the investigative website run by Jeff Bushak stating, quote, I killed Lindsay, spelled Lindsay wrong, and stupid cops will never prove it, close quote. In 2020, the Capitol Daily requested a release of public records related, relating to the case and reported previously unpublished information. The documents revealed that the police had been aware of two phones used by the suspects one with a Vancouver number only used to contact Bushak and another used to check the voicemail of the first phone. The information also revealed that there had been unusual internet activity associated with Bushak before her murder and that police initially suspected that violent criminals on her Facebook friends list may have played a role in the murder. In February 2021, Spanish Police Department announced that there were advancements in DNA analysis and other technology and they had created new leads that had created new leads in the case. However, there have been no updates since then, and it seems increasingly bleak that the case will ever be solved. Okay, so I had a dream. That's what often happens um, for me. Um, I had a dream, and there was this really pretty, um, what I would call like a a German Alp style home. So I see a really pretty brunette standing like at the base of the driveway. And then I see a man and woman walking around the corner. Um, the man's probably 6'1", 6'2", dark hair, had a like tan uh, overcoat on, like a dress overcoat. Um, the woman, ironically enough, I don't remember what she was wearing. <laughs> um, because I was so focused on like her face. And her hair so she had blonde hair she was probably about five three five four she had a scar right here over her eye and the, the the hair looked like a wig it was clearly a bad wig I mean it was clearly a bad wig um, the way Lindsay greeted them and the way they walked up to the house I kind of felt like you know I got kind of um, an inspector or a realtor vibe for, from Lindsay so she gets in the door, they walk inside, and she said, how about if we start upstairs? How about if I show you the master and the ensuite and all that? So they go upstairs, and as she's walking into the master, she is struck from behind. Um, the woman just kind of basically stood there while the man <sighs> savagely <laughs> her. Um... You know she collapsed and was kind of like moaning and they ran down the stairs and they went to go out front and they saw who I now know is Jeff Zylo so they ran to the side door off they went so I wake up from the dream I jot down um, the important details like I always do and normally okay normally if I have a dream it always is told to me who it who it is one way or another right so I went to get my I'm old school okay so I literally have like a notebook paper list of names of cases that people have asked me to do that I work on and I go in line so I get my list out and I'm looking at everything and all of a sudden it was the most bizarre thing you know, let's just say this is what I was looking at. Okay, these are just my notes from the case. All of a sudden, like, 
all the other names disappeared. And all I could see really big was Lindsay Buschak. But here's the weird thing. Her name was checked off. So when I do an H for hold, if I'm not getting anything, if I'm not able to connect, and if I don't have any dreams about the case, I'll put an, an H next to it for hold. And when I'm done with um, a reading, I'll put a check mark next to it. So in really large letters, I see Lindsay Buschak. It was like, so, you know, this is the size of the notebook. Well, like, it was literally like this tall. I saw her name with a check mark next to it. And I was like, what the heck? Like, my eyes were playing tricks on me or something. And then it went back to normal, and I grabbed the notebook, and I was like, what the heck? Lindsay Buschek, I don't remember doing that. I don't remember that name, you know. So I, I look up online to see if I had, I looked on my, you know, my YouTube to see if I had done a video on her, and I hadn't. So it was bizarre. It was bizarre that there was a check next to her name. It, and that's the kind of stuff that happens for me, y'all. <laughs> So I was like, okay. As time went on, I started receiving like little bits and pieces of information. Okay, so that's what we're gonna go over. So I was getting that Jason Zylo, her boyfriend, was not involved in her murder at all. Not at all, y'all. Um, I was also getting that there was a lot more to her death. Um, and this is all alleged, you guys, for entertainment purposes only. Don't sue me. I don't have any money. So, um, but I can't help but all day, like, this name kept popping into my head. All day it kept coming into my head. Shirley Zylo. All day long. And I was like, why do I keep, you know, when I realized that Shirley was Jason, the boyfriend Jason's mom, I was like, why do I keep getting that name? Like... I mean, I must have, that name must have popped into my head a good 25 times, no exaggeration, throughout a 24-hour period, right? So, I was then getting that she's fully aware of who did this to Lindsay. And I was also getting that real, the real estate office where Lindsay worked was definitely a part of this somehow. Um... I believe, because this is what I was given, that Lindsay saw something that she wasn't supposed to see. That's what I think. She saw something she wasn't supposed to see, and she's dead because of it. Um, so I was also getting that the man and the woman that I was cluing in on the woman's face, that they were definitely hired for one purpose, one purpose only, to kill Lindsay. Um, now, here's what I will say. I feel, yes, they've taken a life before. But for whatever reason, I don't feel like they've taken an, another life since Lindsay's life was taken. And I don't feel like they're professional hitmen in any way or women. Um, I don't feel that at all. Like, I feel like they've done it before. So they kind of knew what they were going to do. They went over their little, you know whatever they were going to do. Um, yeah, so I definitely think they've done it before. Um, they were called specifically because someone had said that these people can do the job. So, um, here's the other thing. I know the police say, oh, there's new DNA and you know, we're so much closer and blah, 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 blah. I honestly don't feel like anybody's going to be, there's not going to be any justice in this case, unfortunately. I, unfortunately, I feel like that. Um, I sent an email to um, Mr. Buschak, to Lindsay's father, because I was able to find it when I was doing the research and I just said, you know, hey, I have a small YouTube channel. I'm gonna do a video on your daughter. I just kinda of wanted to give you a heads up and let you know. I never heard anything, but I always, if I'm in a position to let a family member know, I always wanna let them know. Um, but I do think that Jason's mom, she knows exactly what happened. I do feel that. Um, now, if she was the one that actually hired them, I don't know, or she just knew about it, I don't know, I don't know. Um, 
but I just don't feel like there's going to be any justice. And that just really sucks. I mean, everybody deserves justice, you know? So, yeah. Okay, guys. So this weekend is the seventh, seventh birthday of Summer Wells. Still dreaming about her. I'm hoping and praying we can find that poor little girl one day. Um, yeah. So, again, I feel terrible. <laughs> so please don't hold it against me because I, I do feel terrible. But All right, you guys. Be nice, be kind, stay safe, stay healthy. And that about does it for me. Bye, guys.